Does marijuana impact your fertility? Messages are mixed when it comes to cannabis and your reproductive health. How can something from a plant be harmful? It must be natural, right? How can something prescribed by doctors for nausea, cancer patients, and more be bad for fertility? In this episode of the Baby or Bust Fertility Podcast, we'll review the evidence on the impact of marijuana on both male and female reproductive health. Welcome to the Baby or Bust Fertility Podcast, the podcast with interviews and in-depth discussions on all things reproductive health, created to support anyone curious about infertility, miscarriage, and early pregnancy. I'm your host, Dr. Laura Shaheen, a double board certified OBGYN and reproductive endocrinologist and former fertility and IVF patient myself, helping build families for almost 20 years and dedicated to supporting and educating you on your family building journey. Marijuana is one of the most common recreationally used drugs in the United States. One in five Americans have tried marijuana at least once in their life, and lots of people use it on a very regular basis. It is legal recreationally in over 18 states, and in even more states have legalized it for medical use. And there is a real assumption that marijuana is safe and it's good for your health. If it's something that can be prescribed by a doctor to treat medical issues like nausea for chemotherapy patients, sleep disorders, anxiety, then it must be safe. If you can write a prescription for it, then it must be okay. If it's okay by doctors in certain circumstances, then it must be okay in all circumstances. And we'll find when it comes to your reproductive health, this is just not the case. If you are someone that is regularly using marijuana and you are struggling to build your family or suffering from miscarriages, the evidence shows that marijuana is not good for your reproductive health or in pregnancy But it's important to get the facts and not just assume that something is natural and safe and okay to use in your particular situation. What exactly are we talking about? We're talking about cannabis, which is a plant with multiple chemicals or cannabinoids, as they're called. The two most common ones you've probably heard of is THC and CBD. THC, which is Delta 9 tetrahydrocannabinol, or CBD, which is cannabidiol. The THC is the cannabinoid that gives you the high feeling of marijuana, makes you feel lightheaded and sort of euphoric. And the CBD is a different cannabinoid that you've seen marketed in a drugstore and is legal kind of everywhere. And it doesn't, it is a cannabinoid, um, but it doesn't give you that euphoric feeling, that THC feeling. When I'm presenting data here on marijuana impacting reproductive health in men, I can't differentiate between those two different cannabinoids. And the information and the data here is really involving both. I just want to clarify that because when I say marijuana, I'm talking about the marijuana that you could smoke you could eat and it typically gives you that euphoric feeling. And so it's going to include both the THC and the CBD. Marijuana has actually been associated with a lot of poor health conditions. It's been associated with increased risk of stroke, heart disease, bronchitis, even schizophrenia. And men who report weekly use of marijuana have a two times increased risk of testicular tumors. So cannabis has been associated with poor health, but it's also been associated with poor reproductive health. And there are lots of studies showing that it impacts sperm quantity, health, function. And I want to review that evidence with you. I've had a lot of patients that are pretty resistant to hearing this information and really quite disappointed because it's something that they felt was natural. They felt that it was from a plant. They felt that a lot of their friends were doing it. And they really just don't want to hear that it could be impacting their chances of getting pregnant. So let's review the evidence. Here's a study that shows the impact of marijuana on total sperm counts. This is a study talking about the association between marijuana and male reproductive hormones, as well as semen quality. It was looking at over 1,200 Danish men age 18 to 28. They were applying for military service and they were doing testing and answering a questionnaire. The testing included a semen analysis as well as blood tests. And the questionnaire asked a lot of different questions, um, including marijuana use within the last three months. And men who responded that they had used marijuana at least once a week 
for the past three months had a 30% lower sperm concentration or sperm count. What about morphology? Morphology is the shape of the sperm and a higher percentage of more normal shaped sperm is usually associated with a higher fertility rate. This is an excellent study coming out of the United Kingdom, looking at over 1,700 men and 14 different fertility clinics, looking at their sperm parameters and answering questions about marijuana use and other lifestyle factors. And men who regularly used marijuana had a two times increased risk of poor sperm morphology on their semen analysis. So what about motility? So a higher percentage of moving sperm is associated with a higher chance of fertility because that sperm has to swim in order to find the egg to cause fertilization. And many different studies have shown in many different ways that higher use, more exposure to marijuana is associated with a lower percentage of modal sperm on a semen analysis. And a really interesting study that was done at a basic science level looked at sperm parameters from 78 men and exposed the sperm to THC in the lab. And they showed a dose-dependent reaction in that the higher concentration of THC that was exposed to the sperm, the lower and lower the motility became. They showed on a cellular level that this decreased motility is due in part due to the ability of the cannabinoids to decrease the function of mitochondria within sperm. Mitochondria are the energy-packed parts of all cells, and they are required to work very well to help sperm swim where they need to go. And these cannabinoids are decreasing the function of the mitochondria within the sperm cell, and that is one way that motility is decreased. So there's lots of different ways to show the impact of marijuana function on male reproductive health. Most of the studies are looking at semen analysis or sperm parameters from men who are using marijuana compared to men who are not. And that's a human way of showing sort of the poor reproductive health that can be associated with consistent and chronic marijuana use. These scientific studies are actually trying to answer the why are fascinating to me. So another one that looked at this really showed that the sperm, especially the head and the mid piece, have cannabinoid receptors on them. And when these are activated, it dramatically slows the function of the ability of the sperm to swim and move. And it also decreases the acrosome reaction. So the acrosome reaction is how the sperm fertilizes with an egg. They attach and then it's a reaction at the tip of the head of the sperm that releases enzymes that allows the sperm to get through the zona pellucida, the outside shell of the egg, and allows the sperm to get inside to fertilize. And so not only are you seeing poor sperm counts, slower non-modal sperm and poor morphology, but you can show on a cellular level that if the sperm acrosome reaction is defective, then you are not going to be able to fertilize the egg as well. It's just fascinating not only to show parameters that you could test maybe in humans, but on a scientific level, exactly what's happening. A lot of my patients ask like, okay, yes, I'm using marijuana. I know it might make my sperm parameters look bad when we do a semen analysis, but I can still get pregnant, right? Especially if we do fertility treatment. There's not a ton of studies on this, but there is one study looking at IVF outcomes in marijuana users. And when the male partner is using marijuana, there's lower fertilization rate and lower success rate with IVF. And another study actually showed that male marijuana use can increase the risk of miscarriage with patients. So this is an interesting prospective study of over 1,500 couples that were planning to try to conceive and looking at lifestyle factors in the preconception period. And if the male partner was smoking marijuana on a regular basis, there was a two times, almost two and a half times more likelihood of a first trimester miscarriage for that couple when they did actually conceive. So next we'll talk about marijuana and female reproductive health. Marijuana has been studied in lots of aspects of female reproductive health. When my patients are reporting to me irregular menstrual cycles or irregular ovulation, I ask them about marijuana use. Marijuana, regular marijuana use has been shown to impact the production of LH from the pituitary gland. LH or luteinizing hormone is the hormone that signals the release of the egg in the middle of your menstrual cycle. And THC, the, uh, one of the components of marijuana has been shown to decrease the production of LH by at least 30% in people that are smoking or consuming marijuana on a pretty regular basis. 
So low levels of LH can throw off ovulation. If you aren't ovulating, it's much more difficult to get pregnant. If you're ovulating on an irregular basis, it can take longer to get pregnant because it's hard to time intercourse. And even if you are ovulating, lower levels of LH have been shown to impact the function of the luteal phase. Luteal phase is the implantation phase. It's the second half of the menstrual cycle between ovulation and your next period where an embryo should be implanting. And so this effect on LH, an effect on regular cycles and ovulation can throw off someone's menstrual cycles and it can take longer to conceive. So studies have shown this, that regular marijuana use increases the time it takes to get pregnant. An excellent study published in 2021 in Human Reproduction, a well-respected journal, looked at over 1,200 couples that were planning to conceive and found that in the female partner with regular marijuana use had a 50% lower chance of getting pregnant over a six-month period. It took them longer to conceive if they were regularly using marijuana. And so my patients will often say like, okay, I get that. But maybe if we do fertility treatment, it will overcome any sort of poor impact of marijuana. And so studies have looked at this too. And marijuana use has been shown to decrease success rates with IVF. Two different studies have looked at success rates with IVF in patients who are using marijuana on a regular basis. In the first study, over 221 IVF cycles were followed and patients were asked about their marijuana use. And if the female partner was using marijuana on a pretty regular basis within months of the egg retrieval, there were fewer eggs retrieved, fewer embryos, and a lower success rate with their IVF cycle. In a different study looking at marijuana use in over 730 IVF cycles and 421 women, of the 317 women that had a positive pregnancy test after their embryo transfer, if they were regularly using marijuana within a few months of that positive pregnancy test, they had a twofold higher risk of miscarriage. There can be an assumption that marijuana is safe in pregnancy. Um, Some people use it as a way to treat nausea in early pregnancy, but it can be associated with increased risk of miscarriage. It's also been associated with lower birth weight in the babies and then even withdrawal symptoms after the babies are born. An excellent review article looking at cannabis use during pregnancy and even in the postpartum period showed that on a cellular level, cannabinoids really disrupt DNA replication, cellular motility, like we've seen in sperm, cellular migration, and even replication. There are concerns about the impact on the function and development of embryos and even interference with vascular growth as the embryo is trying to implant into the uterine lining. So I know this is a lot of negative information for something that a lot of people feel is natural and most likely safe. But if you are planning to start your family, you are, especially if you're struggling with infertility and you or your partner are regularly using marijuana, this is something that you could change and it could improve your reproductive health. A lot of my patients are disappointed when they hear the evidence regarding marijuana and reproductive health. This impacts not only female partners, but male partners as well. And it can decrease success with fertility treatment. It can increase chances of miscarriage. And it's so frustrating to hear that if you assume that marijuana is safe and natural, which a lot of people still make that assumption. We are so comfortable now counseling about the harmful impacts of tobacco and cigarettes on our overall health and especially our reproductive health. But that was not the case in the 1950s. And I think as we get more and more evidence, we're going to realize that marijuana is really impacting our reproductive health. I hope you enjoyed learning all about marijuana and reproductive health. I know it can be a controversial topic. I know it can be a sensitive topic for people, but I think it's really important to review the evidence and be sure you understand what we know about how it impacts your fertility. Find this episode and all others on my website, drlaurashaheen.com or on YouTube. You can also find lots of educational material on Instagram, on TikTok. I just love educating. Share your own fertility story. Let us know topics you want us to cover and people you'd love to see us interview. Send us an email to hello at drlaurashaheen.com. 
please take a moment to follow the show wherever you're listening right now and take a moment to give us a review. It means so much and it helps people find the show. If you take a minute to give a five-star review and let us know what you love about the show, we really want to hear from you. Thank you to our friends at Seattle Sperm Bank and Braze Runs Production for sponsoring the show. Thank you to my producer, Shannon Perry, and her wonderful team at Audiotocracy. This is your host, Dr. Laura Shaheen. See you next week. And until then, wishing you love, luck, and pineapples.